Right, if you've seen our video where we buy new parts, now we've got to fit them. Job number one is removing this downpipe. This is a wretched design. Because the last bolt is right underneath the curve of the downpipe and this is all the movement that I've got. The real top tip here is don't heat wrap your downpipe in the first place because if you do it will fail so much faster. One heat wrapped downpipe completely sheared off at the end. What I think has happened to you is that there's a scoot forward. So I think this end piece is slightly wider and then they joint it. Um, you can almost see that there's a little bit of a joint there and it slips over the other end uh, and it looks like at that join it has eventually broken off. You can see the last remnants of the weld but anyway this is the heat wrap. So we already had a failure at the top because of the heat wrap and they made a failure at the bottom for the heat wrap. So when a new one goes on Guess what we're not doing to it? Now the good thing is we're working at Dave's shed and he seems to have one of absolutely everything. I mean, there's like five litres of fresh engine oil in this um, and we're going to pull the sump off and rather than throw away 80 quid worth of 10W60 oil uh, we're going to drain it with this magical pump thing. So I've been trying to figure it out. Basically, you pump down, it creates a vacuum and then there's a whole array of little hoses and stuff and in this case I've just jammed it into the dipstick so if you pull up you can see if I bring it back up, I mean it's in the sump right now okay. dip it back in and that focus is not ideal and it goes black again but yeah it is pulling out that oil and putting it in this bucket, which is ghetto rigged using bungee cords because, you know, I am a bit of a pikey. So we're almost empty. Now, sump plugs can be tricky, so you need to get yourself a decent impact driver to remove the sump plug. I'm just kidding, I make a joke. No, no, I'm going to put it down. Moment of truth. Let's see if my pump draining gadget has worked. Not the camera there. Let's see how much oil is left in the sump. Da, 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 da. Ah, damn it! Well, saved some. Some is better than none. Now Dave tells me that I can get most of these sump, bob, uh, sump bolts without moving the engine. But, I'm still going to use a big long impact driver with a wibbly wobble on it. If there's a job worth doing, it's worth doing quickly. The following day. Due to the unique and interesting way that Scotland's weather is completely unpredictable, uh, today is forecast for the worst rain in a hundred years, and instead it is factor 50 weather. Um, so Dave is just finishing up a brake job, but he's been at it for quite a long time already because I've been around the front of the car. So when I left this last night, the car was in a different position. It's now moved further back, and there's something wrong with this engine. It's about two inches higher than it's supposed to be. So I know that David has been underneath here. Uh, oh, well, there's a sump on the floor. That's the first clue. Sump is on the floor and it is absent. So the stock pickup pipe, you can see it hanging down the middle there. That has got to go because we have a new one. One hour later. Shit, sand, it's fucking hot. Uh, right, windage tray and the old pickup pipe is off. That's, uh, that's sterling work by and me. I, yeah, I'd like to say it's carefully and environmentally contained within a proper oil Oh yeah, this, oil this, will be, this, this will be disposed of responsibly. That is, and it's not just fucked into nature. No, no, that's not. No, no. Oh, boys. Yes, we are. We're all about nature here. Oh dear. Oh dear. David, what, what's that oh piece of? Oh dear. Uh, that? That shouldn't be in there. No. No, it shouldn't. Uh, mm. David, I, I understand a little bit about gravity, and that means that piece of metal has fallen down from inside my engine somewhere. Yes, it has. So, better budget for a spare engine then? Depends what it's off of. 
That explains the metal particles. Because there are little pieces there of metal are in there. There are little metal pieces of grit. There are. Oh, well, I'll clean this up and have a look. One minute, 37 seconds later. So, following some panic and disaster where we found a piece of metal in the sump, this little piece here, it's a teeny tiny little bit of metal and it doesn't look like anything we recognise, corn rods or, or bearings or anything like that. But where it has come from is this tiny corner and I'm going to attempt to use my, my zoom. Right, which way up did it go? Was it that way? No, it was the other way. In there? It, it goes in there. Yeah. It, it does, it literally goes in there. It literally. It is a tiny little piece of that. Well, yes. that's, that's not, that's like a windage tray. So it looks like over time that has deteriorated and broken off. Broken off. So that is about as good news as you can get because we've gone from buying your engine, bu budgeting for an engine to actually it's totally fine. So if you ever find that piece of sump in your sump, don't sump, panic. Sump in your sump. Tell us it's all going to be okay, David. It's all gravy. It's all gravy. <laughs> Till it's not. <laughs> I wonder when we find out we can't get the salt back over the... Did they not put the dipstick back in? No. No. That's what we'll get after. But it will reach, right? Yep. Gonna tuck that little bad boy back in its hole. Tell you what, Dave. Fuck doing this on your own. Fuck doing this on the ground? Can you imagine? I'd rather not. What do you think, sausage? You think you can do this on the floor, boy? Sausage. That's here. This is the height of laziness. Rather than jack up the engine, Dave is using the rack jack. Air jack. The bigger one as well. But this is it. Rather than do it manually, he's doing it with a compressor. Lazy bastard. No, no. You. There's lazy a bastard. using the rack jack. Eh? There's a reason for the rack jack. The hydraulic jacks all lower themselves slowly after time. The air jack doesn't. Oh, so you don't want the engine to slowly no. creep down? No. Oh, I thought jacks were jacks. I thought ones that were jacked, that was it. No. The hydraulic ones leak. They, well, not all of them, but ours does. Right, you learn something new every day. They should all leak. I, as a safety feature, I would make all hydraulic jacks leak. Well, if they all leaked and you knew the leaks, you would jack it up and always put axle stands under. You would have no option That's for axle stands. That's true, people would actually use you axle stands. You would have stands. to use axle stands. You could not use them. You're even on ramps and you still got axle stands at the end there. That's how dedicated to safety we safety, are. Safety, safety. Well, I've got to find out where the fuck that goes now. I don't know which fucking way up it goes. There's two, there's two holes there. And then... Uh... What? Dave, where the fuck does this go? I don't know. Because whatever bolts you... They have to go, the bolts have to go in through those holes. Like, so if it went on there, where does it... Does that line up with anything? I mean, it, it lines up there. Nearly. It nearly lines up with those holes, does it? Like, if, if the... Ah, if the ah, that looks like it there. Okay, so it replaces that bit that you took off then. That other metal doodad. Oh you... no, I would say it's in addition to. In addition to. Yeah. That's this is a fucking heavy piece of metal. That's, this that's, this is a hefty. It's fucking two mil steel. Yeah. Like, what is that possible going to brace that this doesn't already brace? No, that's that's there for sure. David, throw this away. Ah, look, because. This weighs no, actually they're about no, they're about eeksy peeksies, I think. Yeah. I can't imagine this is going to add anything to me, David, and it will be a pain at the fucking hoop to fit. Throw that away. Okay. No, no, we'll put that on eBay. We'll put that on eBay. Somebody else can have Ultra it. Ultra racing front subframe bargain, very useful. Um, you, you should buy. Someone should buy it. What? We could get Derek to powder coat it so it looks like it's brand new. Oh yes, powder coat it white. Just powder coat it white again. And then, be, and then be, go back and you better get full, full price for it. Brand new. Even quids in. Bargain. Right, let's not fit that then. What's yeah. next? Progress update. The rain is now on. Um, neither of us can really be bothered today, partly because it's been too hot, but maybe the rain will fix that. Dave has just removed the alternator. You, you're becoming quite handy at removing the alternators and the aircon pumps. Yeah. So you don't have to remove the aircon pump here, just the alternator, and you're going to get two. This little gadget here above. That is either cylinder one, two, three, or four, David. Yes. Um, and that's where we're going to put our little. Uh, sender for the gauges that are fitting inside. This is the engine. This is the engine. It's made of engine. Yes, and there are a lot more hoses than uh, than we're used to. 
on, on Subarus. They're just, they're everywhere. <laughs> the Julie are so much better, please. And some of the kit that we bought us to try and remove some of this shite, but it's so complicated to discover which bits you need to keep and which bits you can get rid of. Like, none of it's simple. And the other difficulty of buying second-hand parts is there's no instructions. So, I think if I was doing this again, David, I probably would just buy everything here. We're making this shit up. <laughs> We're just making it up as we go along. Right, carry on, all in it are in. Uh, that's a heavy fucker. Heavy is good. Heavy. Heavy is reliable. <laughs> that's fucking monkey. <laughs> it's fucking rank. Meanwhile. There's no fucking room to put the hose. Fuel labs. <laughs> it needs to go another way. We're trying to find a home for the fuel pressure regulator now. So, so far today we have... Successfully completed no tasks. We've successfully done almost not. Wow, the wind. We've su successfully done almost nothing. Sad face. We can't fit the exhaust uh, because the jap speed pipe comes at a different angle, so it needs more welding. We can't fit the boost cage because we need more T-pieces. We can't fit the catch can because some of the adapters are missing. We couldn't fit the oil pressure sensors because they were a combination of two thread types, so they've had to re-thread those. We might be able to fit the fuel pump, but we did succeed. We did! We had a success, David! We absolutely did the most complicated part. The baffled sump, the oil pickup pipe. Yeah, so what you said there is we put it on, we don't know if it works yet, so we'll we'll find out, I suppose. But we're we're back it's been a long ass day. We're still working away, Dave is now cutting up some fuel hose, which fortunately had some spares, uh, so we can fit the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, and we'll try and fit the fuel pump, because that'll probably go well. But oh man, what a day. Oh, status update. We have a catch can in there, Roger Clark catch catch can. It's installed. It's a pain in the hoop. We've managed to retain some of the breather pipes uh, for that OEM look. Let's go down underneath for a look. It's a big jump. It has one AF fitting, or AH, I think we've decided. AH ass, asshole. asshole fitting. Uh, uh, goes up to the catch can up there. And our system is fully sealed and leak free, ready for rift days. I thought it was on. Something baffles back in place, we just need to put oil in it. Okay, not that you can tell the difference, but we've now swapped onto the big, uh, possibly 850 horsepower fuel pump. Our gauges are in and they're wired in a respectable manner. Soldering and spade connectors, no, uh, no twisty twisty nonsense like it was when we got it. This has been the single most tiring day that we've had of Subaru work. Many of the tasks that we tried to do didn't go to plan, but we got the big stuff done. Baffled sumps on, pickup pipes done, um, lots of the wire routing is uh, taken care of, fuel pump for 850 horsepower. Catch can. Catch can was a pain in the fucking balls. Um, I didn't even tend to get a catch can. So that's done now as well. Um, it was just made more difficult because like a lot of the kits were missing the bungs and parts that we needed because they were our second hand. And we haven't fitted the Roger Clark second rear pump delete kit. And the exhaust is still a work in progress. Let's show you. Let's show you not there. Let's show you. Oh, down pipe's not even, down pipe's not even there. We'll show you nothing. <laughs> Please excuse the mess, it's my fault. I'm looking forward to tidying up. Right, so all the flanges and stuff have been cut off of the jump speed jobby. Um, the bits over there. This reducer section and, will, and V band. So we'll, Dave will weld that right there. down on the two and a half inch, which then connects to the old, well, the equivalent, but not here. Not, not that bit, because it's not. Yeah, it's not here. Not that bit. So yes, Dave will weld that, um, we will put a link in the description so you can go and watch that, and the card, and all that shit, because that's going to be a bit more of a detailed welding thing, so this is this is the sort of shit that Dave is cooking up, more technical and teardowns and how does it work type videos. 
go and have a look at that. That's it. Uh, if we've managed to cobble together a video from all of this chaos, then great. We will uh, catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. And I guess part two of this mad build will continue. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye. The best thing. Feels like it, doesn't it?